and welcome to the Passenger Seat Podcast, a podcast designed to fill your passenger seat with chat about classic cars, all recorded from my 1968 Morris Minor Peggy. I'm Becca, and today I'm out doing a couple of post-Christmas errands. Uh, Peggy was very low on fuel, so we've just picked up some fuel for her, um, and now we're just popping uh, to pick up a few bits to be able to use one of my Christmas presents. Uh, I was really spoiled and was given a pressure washer with a snow foam attachment uh, by my partner Jamie for Christmas. So uh, I'm going to pick up a few uh, cleaning products so that I can uh, make good use of that in this weird gap between New Year's and uh, Christmas uh, so that she goes into the new year a lot cleaner than she currently is. Uh, thanks to bombing down the A1 last week where she got absolutely filthy. My quirk of plastic car ownership for you today is uh, how it always feels a lot more of an adventure when you're out in uh, your classic car. It's always a good fun trip to have and uh, even really long journeys feel uh, kind of quite fun and enjoyable. Like I mentioned in last week's podcast, we had quite a long trip last week up um, north to uh, initially Yorkshire and then back down to um, Leeds to visit the motorist. Um, And whilst the trip was quite long, um, it was really quite enjoyable and a lot of fun thanks to um, the, the... fact that we were driving Peggy um, even though some people might not think they're as comfortable as modern cars it was still quite a lot of fun so today's podcast you might be familiar with if you've been following me over on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, You can find us there under the Passenger Seat Podcast on all of those platforms. If you search that, we should come up. And over there for the entirety of this month, we've been doing a little challenge which I named the Passenger Seat Podcast Christmas Tree Challenge. Um, And what that's involved is me trying to get as many photos as I can Um, starting with the last weekend in November all the way up until Christmas Day uh, of Peggy next to uh, some Christmas trees. Uh, The Christmas trees didn't have to be kind of official village Christmas trees or anything. Um, It was just a Christmas tree and um, the idea was that I got as many kind of festive photos as I could of her. I couldn't repeat the same tree so if I drove past the tree twice I couldn't stop and get another photo Um, but other than that I was able to repeat some of the trees that I'd done last year and just generally have a bit of fun when I was out and about in Peggy this year. Like I said I did do this challenge a little bit last year uh, not really to any of the same extent Uh, thanks to lockdowns and things like that I wasn't able to get out in Peggy quite so much most of the trips that I saw a Christmas tree on had to be essential trips and I was working from home and all these things so really I think I only got two Christmas trees last year so it wasn't a big number for me to have to try and beat this year Um, but I well and truly uh, went over that Um, so today's kind of podcast is me talking about some of the trees that I managed to get Uh, giving you kind of an idea if you live in I guess a similar area to me uh, what trees might be good for you to check out next year if you'd like to get a nice festive photo of your classic car next to a Christmas tree. I started the challenge in the last weekend of uh, November. I gave Peggy a really big clean and then uh, decorated her up a little bit. 
and had some errands to run actually towards Stamford and I think I've recorded a podcast on that trip actually on the way there and um, whilst I once I'd done those I started uh, the challenge on the way home so my very first Christmas tree was the Christmas tree in Stamford it's one that I'd noticed last year but hadn't been able to get close enough to to get the photo um, if you're familiar with Stamford it's kind of the one in the market square uh, down near All Saints Church. It was a very lovely tree. The square there is always lovely decorated and um, it was just really nice to see. I really liked that tree, managed to get a really nice photo of it um, and then started to head a little bit of a convoluted way home um, to try and pick up some more trees. Now, my mum, who is from Stamford, uh, said that actually Uffington, which is a village quite near Stamford, usually has a really good Christmas tree. So it would be worth kind of going home that way through some of those back roads um, to hit a few trees that way. Uh, so we went to Uffington and because it was the end of November, their tree wasn't actually up yet. So we um, found a tree, myself and Peggy, uh, on the end of somebody's driveway. Two very lovely trees. Um, that I managed to quickly park up, jump out, take a photo um, to kind of tick Uffington off the list and uh, head did on to the next tree. Uh, those two trees were very lovely. There was actually a really nice tree a little bit further into the village um, but it wasn't where, anywhere that I could really park Peggy next to whereas I managed to kind of just about get away with uh, that one there um, and kind of got a double whammy of the trees there Although, given that it's all in one location, I only counted that as one tree. On that trip home, I also tried to hit a few other little villages whilst going through the back roads. Um, and a few of them really hadn't got their trees up yet. Um, however, Maxi was on the ball and they had a really gorgeous tree that was very nice to park next to, really easy there. And um, actually, probably one of my favourite photos that I took of Peggy next to a tree um, because it was kind of just that right time in the evening where the lights were on um, but it wasn't so dark that you couldn't really make Peggy out so that was a, a particularly good one. The next opportunity I had to catch a tree was uh, actually on my way home from work and it was a tree that I'd managed to get last year and that is the tree in the centre of Whittlesea. Um, it's quite a good uh, tree to get um, it was kind of the tree that inspired me to try and park next to trees last year because it was reasonably easy if you were happy to kind of risk very quickly parking up in a in a taxi rank, taking the photo and jumping back out. Um, and it was a very lovely tree. Last year you get some other kind of Christmas decorations because it's in the square as well. Um, and it works out really quite well. After that I didn't get another chance until the Friday night of that week um, when Jamie had his work for Christmas do. Um, so that was a couple of towns over. So we took Peggy so that I could catch a couple of Christmas trees, hopefully, on the way home. Um, I stopped off in St Ives, um, which had a fantastic tree, really good for parking next to. And also, whilst I was very briefly parked up, um, I was able to have a nice chat with a gentleman who had just come out of one of the pubs in the town um, about Peggy. So that was quite nice. And again, I hit that tree really at the perfect time to get a really nice photo of her. I also tried a, another village that I knew had had a tree the year before, and that was uh, Houghton. However, that whilst their tree was up, unfortunately it wasn't quite lit then, they hadn't had their turn uh, light switch on yet. So I didn't really get that photo. Also, there was a lot of cars parked around it. Um, so I didn't get that photo and I hadn't had an, another chance to, for the rest of the month to go back and get that photo um, because I've just been so busy. So a bit of a shame there that we missed out on a tree that um, quite easily could have been got. 
However, um, it means that there are lots of trees that I could possibly redo this challenge and try and better myself next year. Also on that trip home, I managed to hit Ramsey St Mary's where a house had a very lovely two Christmas trees in their front garden that I was able to kind of, because it was quite late, park up alongside, get those photos um, before heading home. So quite a good collection of trees uh, so far. The next week I made a couple of detours on my way home. Uh, a few people had messaged me to tell me about some trees that were quite local. Uh, so I headed home via Wandsford um, so that I was able to get the tree at the Neen Valley Railway Station there. Um, really lovely kind of period picture with uh, a couple of fairy lights involved there. I also managed to go home via Stilton, um, another lovely little village alongside the A1, um, where one house had an absolutely spectacular display of lights in their front garden, raising money for the air ambulance locally, and uh, it was a really gorgeous display um, that I put a couple of pennies in the, the pot for, um, and got a really fantastic photo of uh, Peggy outside. I think it was about this point I realised that there was a night setting on my phone so I was able to get a couple better pictures for some of uh, the lights there and um, some kids that were visiting the house to have a wander around uh, some of the back of it were pretty pleased to see uh, Peggy all dressed up in her tinsel and fairy lights etc. Also on that trip home, uh, came home via home um, a lovely little village a little further off and on the other side of the A1 and again somebody had decorated a, a gorgeous big tree in their front garden uh, that I managed to get a photo of um, and also a very wet foot because it was a gigantic puddle as soon as I stepped out of the door. kind of that trip out um, I did really enjoy having a little detour home uh, because it's it's often very tempting at this time of year to just get home as soon as possible because it's dark and miserable um, but actually that was a really nice drive I had uh, a lot of joy coming from seeing those Christmas lights and um, made a bit of a change of my commute the next opportunity I had to get some more Christmas trees was after my own work's Christmas kind of meal. We went to a little restaurant in uh, Peterborough and uh, exchanged our secret Santas with our little department. And then uh, I was talking about some of the stuff that I'd been doing with my car because they'd all receive uh, Christmas cards with Peggy on the front of. Um, and because they all lived a little bit more locally they knew of a good couple of trees there so there was a house at Longthorpe that I drove to initially they weren't lit up first so then I went somewhere else and then came back um, but the house again was lit up pretty spectacularly um, for Sue Ryder's uh, Thorpe Hall uh, hospice that is quite local to Longthorpe and uh, this garden was absolutely spectacular, proper walkthrough situation. Um, managed to get a picture of Peggy parked outside of it as well. Um, and also the guy who uh, owned the house came out and spoke to me because he'd spotted my car um, and uh, was a big fan of the fairy lights that I'd put up in her. So that was really nice. When I was waiting for Longthorpe to light up, I popped across to Warrington Village, again another tree that I'd been told about at that Christmas lunch um, and was detouring home via and uh, this tree was beautiful, Warrington Village is really gorgeous anyway um, but the tree was ideal for getting a photo next to um, because it was kind of off a little slip road as well so worked out really well for a photograph there. Um, another favourite of mine, I think, that one. Um, although I just love Christmas trees and I love classic cars, so I'm a big fan of most of the photos I took, to be honest.
The next Christmas trees I managed to get was on the Sunday of Quest Brothers Christmas Cars and Coffee. Um, we decided we were going to go and grab a, a bit of lunch afterwards and that were, meant that we were driving quite close to uh, Spoldwick which my dad had actually spotted a really gorgeous house there uh, really beautifully done up um, and it's actually a picture that I've used for a thumbnail on uh, this podcast um, so I was really glad to get uh, that picture because it was a really lovely house and again to get it during the daytime um, because there wasn't uh, as many kind of lights involved in their decoration which was quite nice um, we also, whilst we were out that way, managed to do uh, the Christmas tree at Kim Bolton, another gorgeous village, and whilst we were there we actually spotted a couple of other classic cars that were out for a drive, um, because it really was a lovely perfect day, uh, where it wasn't too cold, there wasn't any salt on the roads, um, and uh, quite sunny really, so it was a perfect day for getting your classic out during winter, um, all things considered. So. Those were two good trees to tick off. I also managed to do a detour another day um, on my way home from uh, work, I think it was, um, where I went via Chatteris. Uh, Chatteris had some lovely decorations up throughout the town um, and actually had two Christmas trees but one of them was particularly easy to park next to and meant that I could get some other lovely photos of kind of Peggy parked in quite an old little town with some lovely little festive decorations up. So definitely recommend uh, that Christmas tree if you're looking for one in the area. Another little festive trip out we made was to uh, Van Haag. Uh, the, Chris, uh, the garden centre there was um, something that we kind of looked forward to going and having a look around garden centres at Christmas anyway. Um, but we won that cream tea um, there thanks to uh, dressing up for children in need. So we took Peggy along and been told that there was a Christmas tree there and they were right, very nicely manicured Christmas tree. Uh, for us to manage to get a photo by and um, it was reasonably easy because it was in the car park um, but uh, the kind of pedestrianised parts of it and the bushes obscured it a little bit um, but it was nice uh, enough and another photo uh, for the collection. Now throughout this month I've been driving past one house um, on my way to my parents' house uh, in Little Bravely and it's a house that you know has fantastic Christmas decorations because they're one of those houses that has to leave them up all year round and just turn them off and uh, actually it was about this point in the month, quite late really, I managed to stop by at about the right time where all the lights were coming on and finally get a photo of uh, Peggy next to all their fantastic decorations and it's been a real joy to keep driving past that house uh, throughout this month. Now, again, after a uh, Christmas dinner, this time with the Singer Owners Club, uh, talking to some friends that we had there that know the area reasonably well, they were able to let me know of some other good Christmas trees in the area. And I had a day before we did our big trip um, up north, so we uh, made a little trip out to give Peggy, a, I guess, a warm up run for the next day um, and uh, got some trees. So, this started off with a photo in War Boys, uh, which was a very nice tree. It had been a tree that was on the local paper, so I knew it was worth getting. Then we headed on to Ben Stanton and got a photo at their Christmas tree, another reasonably easy to park next to Christmas tree, um, that actually my parents had managed to get a lovely little photo of their A40 next to uh, earlier in the month. Then we came kind of home on a bit of a convoluted way from there 
via Wood Walton, which was one of the trees that I'd actually been told about, that was reasonably disappointing actually, and I don't know if that was because I was in the daytime, or if it was because um, it was just kind of a, quite a small tree compared to some of the spectacular ones I'd seen. And um, on top of that, we had uh, a nice trip to Wistow, another little village that had a really lovely tree in their uh, churchyard. But on top of that, had some gorgeous yarn bombing uh, that was all Christmas themed around the area as well. So got some really nice little festive photos there. And then I was hoping to kind of hit quite a few trees on our trip up north, um, but we always seem to be kind of in a little bit of a rush to get to places. Uh, so it meant that actually we didn't get to stop that much. We passed some really nice ones on our way past York and things like that. Um, but we just did not get that opportunity to stop really because we were so busy going on. Um, and unfortunately I was hoping kind of the motorist might have an outside tree that we could have parked next to um, but all their gorgeous decorations were inside uh, so I didn't actually get any trees that on that trip which was a shame we spotted so many lovely ones but there wasn't really the, the option to stop so that took us all the way up to Christmas Eve Eve when we were home we spent Christmas Eve at home and then Christmas Day we were out uh, visiting uh, family. So I managed to get one last Christmas tree, uh, which was actually just a couple of streets over from my parents' house as we were leaving theirs uh, on, late on Christmas Day. Um, and again, it was uh, saved really. We were saved really again by somebody having uh, a gorgeous tree in their front garden and parking up in front to grab that last photo. So like I said last year we only got two so we did exceptionally well uh, this year um, with the trees and managed to get a grand total of 23 trees. Now at the beginning of the month after I'd hit three on that one day I got people to guess how many trees they thought I'd managed to get um, and there was wildly varying guesses all the way up to uh, mid 60s in terms of trees which was a lot of faith in me I'll be honest um, but I was pretty pleased that we managed to get 23 which happened to be the exact guest of uh, Lewis who you saw on the podcast earlier this month there was a small prize for uh, getting the right amount but actually Lewis has received uh, being a good friend of the podcast, a sticker already, and a Christmas card. Um, so I might look into finding something else for him. But that is the end of my kind of festive podcasts. Uh, for the year. I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you've enjoyed, if you're watching on YouTube, some of the festive decorations we've got up for Peggy. Um, and that you've had a lovely festive period and maybe had a chance to get out in your classic car either on Boxing Day this week or you're going to take it out um, on New Year's Day later. Um, but if not, I hope uh, you've had a good f festive period regardless and you've got, uh, you you've enjoyed the podcast. Uh, drive safely, happy motoring, and I'll see you again next week.